Hello there! So, if you watch this channel, you're probably at least a little bit familiar with Stephen King. I mean, he's one of the most prolific authors in history. You know, he's written so many books, and probably more books than he's read now that I think about it. But, we all have our favorites, because they, all of his books have the, their own little quirks, their own little flaws, their own little things that just make them a little bit better, and things that make them appeal to different people. So I thought, why not? Let's go through just a list of some of Stephen King's most popular books, and we'll just look at what it says about you if that one is your favorite. So first up, we have The Stand. Now, this is a story all about a flu virus that gets out of control and destroys the whole world, and then the forces of good and evil have one last clash, and things happen from there. It gets really crazy and weird. It's a long book, too. And it's been made into two separate miniseries, one in the 90s and one just last year in 2020. If The Stand is your favorite Stephen King book, then this last year has been your biggest nightmare come to life. In fact, you might not even see this video because you might still be hiding out in a bunker without internet access. You have followed COVID guidelines to the letter. Like, you have not left in le your house unless absolutely necessary, you have worn masks at all times, you've yelled at people who don't wear them, and thank you for that, we appreciate it. And you got the vaccine the instant that it became available in your area. You wash your hands every 15 minutes, even if you're wearing gloves and even if there's no other people around. Basically anything to prevent Captain Trips from happening. Next up is Carrie. Now Carrie is Stephen King's first published novel, actually. It's all about a teenage girl who is raised by a crazy religious mother who abuses her terribly, she's outcasted at school, doesn't have many friends, and she also starts to develop psychic powers, and then when she gets bullied, she just straight up kills a bunch of them with her psychic powers. This book has been adapted into movies twice, which is probably how a lot of people are originally familiar with it. And if this one is your favorite, then that means you were raised in a religious household. It might not be crazy religious, the way Carrie's mom was, but you were at least moderately to extremely religious, you were brought up in that environment, and now you're an angry atheist, because you just feel like you were lied to, you read a Richard Dawkins book once, it just... You know, you, you saw the truth of the universe, and you're just, you're angry at it, and you're gonna let everyone know about it. You're also possibly bullied, or you were when you were younger. Uh, it's not because of anything you couldn't help, it's because you watched anime. And it's not because you watched anime, it's because you Naruto ran in the halls. You're also most likely an edgelord who thinks that using racial slurs on Xbox Live is the pinnacle of comedy. Next is possibly Stephen King's most famous book of all time, it's IT. This one is about a killer clown who's actually a demon or something, who terrorizes a small town in Maine, because of course it takes place in a small town in Maine, and a bunch of kids have to stop him, and then years later they have to stop him again as they're adults. This book has been adapted to film twice, one of which almost didn't suck. And if it's your favorite, that means you're a pedophile. Yeah, if you've read the book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Shining. Now, this one is, again, probably best well known through its film adaptation directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Jack Nicholson, but you also might know it from its miniseries adaptation because this was adapted twice. You might be noticing some sort of pattern here. Basically, it's about a family who chills out at an abandoned ski lodge in the Colorado mountains while it's, you know, there's no other people around, so isolation and all that. It sucks. And basically, if this one is your favorite, then that means you want to kill your wife. And if you don't have a wife, it means that you are subconsciously seeking one out so that you can marry her and then kill her later. It also means that being isolated during the COVID quarantine is the hardest thing you've ever had to do. You know, sitting at home with internet access and Netflix and a full fridge of food. Yeah, that's the most difficult thing you've ever done in your life. And you're going to complain about it from now until Judgment Day, because your first world problems are just the worst. Then there's The Dark Tower, which is Stephen King's fantasy magnum opus. Now, this one is a weird one, because it's basically all about a gunslinger chasing an evil wizard across a bunch of dimensions, because most of Stephen King's books take place in this one big multiverse, but you have to travel between different worlds and stuff to see all of them, and that's exactly what the main character here does, and he also speaks to Stephen King himself at one point. It's weird. It's weird, man. If The Dark Tower is your favorite book, or your favorite series, rather, then that means that you like fantasy, you want to get into fantasy, 
But you think stuff like Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, The Cosmere, King Killer Chronicles, you think that is all just too weird and for nerds and you think you'd be ostracized for it. So like the pussy you are, you just read Stephen King books because those are more societally acceptable. 112263. This is a simple one. It's about James Franco going back in time to try and stop the Kennedy assassination, and then weird time travel shenanigans go down. If this one is your favorite, you believe that Lee Harvey Oswald was not acting on his own when he killed JFK. You believe that he was a CIA asset and that this was a whole huge conspiracy within the US government to get rid of Kennedy. You also believe that the moon landing was fake, that NASA lies about the Earth being flat, that Bigfoot was the result of a covert government experiment, and that mattress stores are exclusively used for money laundering. Under the Dome. This one sounds extremely silly at first, because the plot of it is basically the same as the plot of the Simpsons movie. A small town in Maine... Just a big, clear dome is dropped over it one day, and they don't know what caused it. Was it magic? Was it aliens? Who's to say? But inside the dome, they're running out of food and water and stuff, so they're trying to find a way to escape. You might know about it from its terrible television adaptation, which was just the... it, it was the worst thing ever. It was... It, even when it was following the book, it was awful. It was the worst... I... it was... no. No, Dean Norris was okay, but overall, no. And if this one is your favorite, then that means you are LGBT+, plus, but you are still in the closet. I will not explain that further. The Green Mile. Now this is a good one to get the tears flowing. It's not that scary, but it is really dramatic and emotional. It hits you, hits you right in the feels. Basically, it's about this guy who is on death row for a crime he didn't commit, and he also has magical powers so he can like heal people and stuff. And it's, it's, it's really great. It's a really sad story and all. And if this one's your favorite, that means you have a very difficult relationship with your father. Again, no explanation. The Eyes of the Dragon. Now, this is another one of Stephen King's books, which is kind of just a traditional fantasy tale, but it's like with a Stephen King uh, twist on it. And it's not really scary, but it is an interesting story. It's like this fantasy world, there's a kingdom going on, and then an evil wizard who is the same evil wizard from The Stand and from The Dark Tower. Let's not get into that because it's confusing, but an evil wizard conspires to, like, kill the king and cause a bunch of problems, and good guys have to stop him. Yay. If The Eyes of the Dragon is your favorite Stephen King book, it means you don't exist. H has anyone else even read this thing besides me? The Tommyknockers. This is a weird one. Basically, this woman in a small town in Maine discovers an alien spaceship that crashed however many thousands of years ago and has been buried underground that whole time, and she starts to excavate it, and then as she excavates it, weird signals start coming out of the ship, which affect the minds of people in town. They start making this crazy technology, but they also start, like, killing each other and having weird mental breakdowns. The metaphor here is pretty obvious, because Stephen King is a an alcoholic. He's had a lot of issues with substance abuse in his life, uh, and he mainly used it a lot because it made him more creative. It made him a better writer, at least he felt it made him a better writer, and so this whole thing is a metaphor. You know, it's a substance that makes you smarter and more creative, but it also makes you dependent on that substance, and it makes you a worse person, and etc, etc. So basically, if this is your favorite Stephen King book, that means you're also an alcoholic. And if you comment on this saying that, wait, I'm not an alcoholic, I, I just really like the book, that means you're in denial. Cujo. This is another really, really early Stephen King book. It's about a big dog who gets bitten by a bat who has rabies, and then the dog kind of goes nuts and just starts attacking people. And if this is your favorite Stephen King book, that means you hate dogs. You kick puppies for fun. What the hell is wrong with you? Bag of Bones. This is a, another one that isn't really scary all that much. It's just kind of a drama. Basically, an author, because the main character is an author. We've never seen that in Stephen King books before, but... An author, his wife dies, and he starts getting terrible writer's block, so he's just like, oh, okay, I'm sad now, and I'm gonna go to a small town in Maine to stop being sad. If this is your favorite Stephen King novel, that means you are a member of the East Syriac Rite Syro Malabar Catholic Church who secretly disagrees with the beatification of Ronnie Maria. But, obviously, you can't come out and say that because you'll be ostracized by your community, and, you know, I, I sympathize with that, but, um, I mean, the beatification seems pretty legit to me. 
Christine. This one is about a car that kills people, and if Christine is your favorite Stephen King novel, that means you spend way too much time on Reddit. Not only that, but your favorite subreddit is r slash dragons fucking cars. Salem's Lot. This is another pretty straightforward one. It's about a small town in Maine called Salem's Lot, and it gets attacked by vampires. And that's actually a pretty apt way of putting it. And if this is your favorite, if this is your favorite Stephen King book that you've ever read of all time, that means that you are still mad about Twilight. Yeah, like, you're, you're mad that the vampires sparkled and stuff, because they changed it. You're not supposed to change this mythology which has been altered for thousands of years, and also the movies stopped coming out almost ten years ago, dude. Find something else to complain about. And that is all. As we know, Stephen King has not written any more books than that. Okay, he's, he's written, like, thousands of them. I'm pretty sure he's written more books than he's read, but, you know, the point is, that's all the ones I'm gonna talk about here. So be sure to, like, reblog, retweet, recomment the the th um, hit the thumbs, uh, five star rating stuff on this video, and uh, sub subscribe. Uh, uh, thanks to all all the names on here. Those are my patrons, and thanks to ten dollar and up, uh, Apo Savalane and Olivia Ray and Brother Santodis, Christopher Quinton, Embis, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Madison Lewis Bennett, Microphone, Paul Williams, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Ve Victus. You're all you're you're all really cool. All, all the names on here, uh, they, they, they gave me money, uh, and they get stuff like early access to videos and uh, voting on future video topics. You, um, if you want to be one, then do that. If you, if you don't want to do that, then um, join, jo join my channel. Become a channel member. That's great. Or, or um, just, you know, subscribe, like, video, comment. Um, uh, spread this around. I need help.